Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair hosted by StriveScan. Um, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. We do ask if you're asking a question in the Q&A that you indicate who, um, which institution you are asking the question to, so that way our presenters can appropriately answer the question. Your camera, phone and microphone, uh, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of uh, many other sessions happening, um, so be sure to sign up for more. This presentation is being recorded as well as others and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash from MACAC. We have a great lineup for you today, um, so don't be shy in the Q&A and you can ask questions again at any time. And I now like to turn it over to our first presenter. Uh, San Diego State University. Take it away. All right, I think that's working. All right, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Zahn. I'm the Regional Admissions and Recruitment Manager at San Diego State University. SDSU is obviously located in San Diego, and I'm regionally based in Colorado, so thank you for joining us this evening. Really appreciate you taking some time to learn about all these great schools. Um, nicknamed America's Finest City, San Diego is home to 70 miles of coastline, more than 100 colorful and unique neighborhoods, Balboa Park, Coronado Island, Gaslamp Quarter, USS Midway Museum, Fernando Tatis Jr., and so much more. It's also blessed with mountains, deserts, parks, and hundreds of miles of trails and world-class educational opportunities that you can take advantage of. Um, SDSU is actually a diverse campus, a very diverse campus of 30,000 undergraduate students and over 400,000 alumni. And it offers unique cross-border educational and service opportunities, over 500 study abroad programs across the globe, eight unique cultural centers, and close to 100 majors across seven different colleges. We've also been recognized as a Hispanic-serving institution, recipient of the Higher Education and Diversity Award, uh, Best College for LGBTQ Students, according to Campus Pride, and an NCA Division I Athletics Powerhouse in the Mountain West Conference. Let's uh, take a quick aerial tour here. So that is a look at SDS, SDSU's main campus. Um, in fall 2022, we should see the first stage of construction on the SDSU Mission Valley campus expansion and may include um, completion of actually our multi-use stadium for college football, professional soccer, other sports, concerts, and events. It will also include more than 80 acres of open space with a river park, athletic and recreational fields, more than four miles of hiking and biking trails, and most importantly, 1.6 million square feet of academic research and innovation space. So if you decide to call SDSU home for your four-year college experience, you'll have the opportunity to live in one of our residential learning communities. In these communities, you'll live alongside other students with shared academic, career, or co-curricular interests. Some examples include pre-law, visual performing arts, Pride House, the Weber Honors Residential College, and we even have a residential learning community for undeclared majors. And as an out-of-state student, you are required to live on campus your first two years. And the advantages of living on campus are numerous. And research indicates that students that live on campus have higher GPAs, report a better college experience overall, and graduate in a timely fashion. But obviously, you know, the, the purpose of going to college or attending SDSU is to earn your degree. With close to 100 majors organized into seven different colleges and SDSU Global Campus, there's something for, for just about everybody. Popular programs include psychology, criminal justice, kinesiology, business, mechanical engineering, and nursing. And every major has a map or what we refer to as the major academic plan to provide you with a roadmap to graduate in four years. Uh, additionally, um, there are a ton of unique academic resources available to you. So to enhance your out-of-class experience, things like the Coastal Marine Institute Lab, the Drone Lab, 
Center for Clinical and Cognitive Neuroscience, Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, there's a nuclear, nuclear magnetic resonance facility, and the Human Patient Simulation Center. Um, but you know, in addition to earning your degree, we also want you to enjoy your experience and have fun on campus. So whether you want to play a sport, join one of our more than 300 clubs and organizations, lead a community service project, write for the student newspaper, or work on the campus radio station, you'll find endless opportunities to stay active and engaged with campus. So that's a quick little look at the Aztec experience. And so if you're, if you're ready to join the SDSU community, what do you need to know for application and admission purposes? Students apply at calstate.edu slash apply. Evaluation of students is based on GPA, required A through G course completion, strength of curriculum, and intended major. SDSU is test blind, test free for fall 2022 applicants. The application is available October 1st through the end of November, potentially early December. And admission decisions are sent by March and you have until May 1st to submit your intent to enroll. Um, so I really just wanna thank you for your time. I hope you'll consider joining the SDSU Aztec family. Good luck with your college search and please feel free to ask any questions via the chat. Likewise, my contact information is here. So feel free to contact me if I can be of any help. Um, be well, enjoy the remainder of your school year and have a nice evening. Thanks again. Thank you so much, San Diego State. Next up, we have University of Redlands. Alrighty, great. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. And, oh goodness, there we go. <clears throat> Alrighty, well, hello everyone. My name is Dulce Garcia. I'm an admissions counselor for University of Redlands. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, and University of, Ro of Redlands is located in Southern California. We are located in the traditional homelands of the Serrano and Cahuilla people, um, about 60 miles east of Los Angeles. <clears throat> so just a little bit more about our location. Um, University of Redlands is in the heart of Southern California. So we're close to beaches, mountains, desert, LA, Anaheim, all those really great places that you would want to call home when you are in college. Um, so you can kind of um, admire kind of like our location. Um, but Redlands is a really great place to call home. Um, we were actually called one of the best college towns by AAA Magazine a few years ago. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Our average temperature is about 80 degrees daily. So um, we don't really know what snow looks like unless we're looking up at the mountains, of course. Uh, so just a little bit about Redlands. Um, we are in Redlands, California. We have about 2,500 undergraduates on a pretty large campus, 160 acres. Um, we're a pretty residential institution. Um, all of our students are required to live on campus all four years. Um, so there's a housing guarantee. Um, and so about 80, or excuse me, about 70% of our students live on campus for the full time. So um, definitely very close knit um, community. We also really pride ourselves on an inclusive and diverse community. And overall, who is Redlands? Our mission statement says that we want to educate the heart and the mind of the scholar. So we really value the education that is occurring inside of the classroom. So that's educating your mind, but also that additional education that is happening when you are um, really um, passionate about something, when you are um, involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. So that is educating the heart. And by combining those two things, we really believe that our students are able to become really well-rounded citizens and able to serve the communities around them. Um, so a little bit about our student life at Redlands. We have over a hundred um, clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. And those really range from a lot of different things. So if you're looking for something like Greek life um, or athletics, we definitely have those. Um, so check those out. Um, one of the most important things about our campus is our commitment to service. Um, so we actually have a graduation requirement of about 80 hours um, per student while they're here at Redlands for the four years. Um, you're able to complete those service hours whichever way that you would like, but that really goes back to educating the heart. Um, so ensuring that our students are passionate about additional um, things that are not just academically based, but allows our students to think critically and be able to connect the dots between things that they are learning in the classroom and then those things that they are experiencing for themselves. 
Um, so I did mention um, a commitment to diversity. We are located in Southern California. Um, so our location is very diverse. So our institution has a lot of programming, a lot of offices to support those students. We do have a multicultural center, a pride center, a gender, ju gender justice center, native student programs, first generation student programs, as well as an office for international student scholars. Um, so I did mention athletics. Uh, we do have 21 sports. They are, um, we are an NCAA Division III institution. Um, we are pretty um, competitive in athletics. About 75% of our sports rank nationally. Um, so if you're looking to play competitively but still really focused on academics, I would definitely recommend Redlands to you. Um, we have tons of things that you can be involved in. One of our most popular and most competitive sports is going to be football. Um, so you know, definitely Friday nights is really active here on campus. Um, but like I mentioned, um, our community is very tight knit predominantly because we do have a housing commitment. Um, so our students do live on campus all four years, a majority of our students do. Um, but we do have a lot of services for our students who are living on campus so that they're able to get a really great experience. So some of these support services are going to be in tutoring, counseling, and we also do have an on-campus health center for our students' convenience. Um, but let's dig a little bit more into the academics of University of Redlands. So we are a traditional liberal arts institution. Um, so our students get a really well-rounded education. We do have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Our average classroom size is 18 students. So really tight knit experience, the ability to ask questions, build arguments, um, you know, be able to have conversations, engage with others, um, and really get to know your faculty members. Our faculty members are students' academic advisors. So for the four years that you are here, you're working with your favorite professor to be able to build your curriculum to the best of your abilities. Um, also, when you're looking for research or internship opportunities, our professors are really your first contact there. Um, we do have a lot of research that is focused for our undergraduate students. Um, so you're able to work hand in hand with those professors that you get to know really well in the classroom experience. Um, here are our majors. We do have over 40 programs of study and they are pretty diverse and range in a lot of different subjects. So you might be interested in something like biology, chemistry, or engineering, or something like theater arts, creative writing, um, or you know, public policy. So there's tons for you to do here at Redlands that really gives that well-rounded experience for our students that I was talking about earlier. Um, now, if you're looking for something special and unique, um, Redlands offers the Johnson Center for Integrative Studies and the School of Music. Um, so for students who are interested in building their own major, they can focus in Johnson, or if you're looking for a conservatory style education, then the School of, the School of Music might be a good fit for you. Um, so in terms of applications, um, we do um, accept the common app and we are a test optional institution. Um, so no need to submit your test scores. Um, and in regards to financial aid, we do offer need-based merit and um, talent-based scholarships. So thank you so much. If you have any other questions, you can connect with us um, in the future, but thanks so much for having us. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Dominican University of California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome and thank you for taking the time to be here. My name is Robert Bass. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Dominican University of California. So, so for all of those that don't know, we are located in the Bay Area, about 20 minutes if you time it right from San Francisco, uh, very close to the ocean and Redwoods, it's a very beautiful campus. We've been there since like 1870. So it's really incredible. A few fast facts about Dominican. We have, again, uh, around since 1890, we have 1,800 students. That does include graduates. So we are a very small school with that. Like we heard from Pacific as well. You know, we have very small class sizes, averaging about 15 to one. I think the largest we have about 27 students in a class. 78% uh, diversity, 99% receive aid. I'm still trying to find the 1% that does not receive aid. 35% uh, Pell eligible, 23% first generation. 87% uh, of our students stay for their second year with an average GPA of 3.6. So 
So uh, a little more about us, fun facts. We are in the top 11 for select private colleges and universities for social mobility. We have a minor that can be included in any single person's major that really focuses on social mobility. Being in the Bay Area, there's a lot of area, ways to get involved. Quality and value, uh, Dominican was ranked as one of the best colleges for your money in 2019. It also helps being in the Bay Area where we have all these amazing companies that work over to graduate. So that's an, that's an area to think about as well. Uh, number one, we're top 11 for ethnic diversity and one of the top 40, uh, 25 regional universities in the West. So something we pride ourselves on these four pillars called the Dominican experience. The first one is going to be what we call integrative coaching. What that is, is that as soon as you come out of campus, we're going to pair you with a student that's been there already. So they can help you show, you know, where your classes are, where the nearest target is, where the best place to get food on campuses, or for us, the only place to get food on campus because we only have one cafeteria. We are that small. Um, they're there to help you through anything like that, or, you know, to have shoulder to talk to when you're having trouble, you know, your first year, maybe that's in you know, they're there for everything. They've been there. They're on the other side of it. They're really there for you to be kind of a soundboard. The next area is going to be uh, called community engagement. Every student, no matter what your major is a Dominican, gets to do an internship to graduate. It's part of your curriculum to graduate. These days, having a degree is just always not enough. So we want to make sure that our students are getting internships when they're here and they're guaranteed. So maybe if you're a business, you're going to be doing two or three. Um, if you're a nursing, you're gonna be doing five. If you know your biological sciences, maybe you're just focusing on one long research project, whatever it might be. Uh, with that is our signature work. What your signature work is, is all the hard work you put in when you're at Dominican. All of it's gonna be put together to kind of show all the work you've done. So obviously depending on your major, it's gonna be different. If you're doing creative writing, it's gonna be all your writing samples, graphic design, everything that you've developed online, all of that is gonna be your signature work. We're gonna make sure we compile it all to put it in your digital portfolio. 80% of employers say it'd be really helpful when they're looking for talent to be able to see what they've done when you're applying. This way we have that all put together for you. We're gonna help put this digital portfolio together. So when you're applying for jobs afterwards, when you send your resume and everything, you're also sending this link over, they can see all the impressive work you've done. It really helps our students get jobs when they're done. Jobs, these are some of the amazing areas our students are working at once they graduate. Again, really helpful being in the Bay Area where we have all these phenomenal companies just across the, the bridge or even some on the North Bay side as well by us. Uh, these are some of the hospitals that our students are working at as well in case you go one of the medical routes. And if a bachelor's degree is not enough for you um, and one of our master's degrees is not called to you, these are where we're sending students once they're done to make them with a bachelor's degree. So we currently are open for applications still. It's free, it doesn't cost you a dime. Uh, for the most part, we're just asking for a personal essay. And if you're, you're looking for nursing, um, that is gonna be a little bit additional. We'll need some testing, uh, which we are testing optional this year, but I'm not sure if that's gonna stay or not. With that also a letter of recommendation is required for nursing, but also encouraged for other, all other majors. It's gonna be on our website, dominican.eu, as long as the Common app as well. Getting involved, just like a larger university, there's there's tons to do on campus, clubs, organizations, there's a variety that you can choose from. Um, I personally love to see our students really getting involved on the campus. Uh, students do not have to live on campus, but is encouraged. And so if you want to or not, there's still other ways to get involved, whether it's the Bay Club, uh, part of the Business Bash, whatever it might be. We are also a division two school, the Pac West Conference. So we have basically every sport except for football. Uh, therefore, nothing kind of takes over. You can, you know, everything's gonna be a little equal there. It's really fun during my lunch breaks. I go on, when, I'm, when I was on campus, I went across the street, watched a lot of women's soccer games. Those are always a lot of fun. This is the way they stay connected with us. This is our hashtag for Twitter. It's also our Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. If you message us on Twitter or Instagram, we're gonna get back to you from one of our student ambassadors. So thank you for taking the time. It was really a pleasure speaking to all of you. Again, my name is Robert Bassett, and I'll type my information in the chat as well. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much, Dominican University. Next up, we have University of Portland.
All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for letting me join you today. My name is Cassie Esparza. There is my video. Uh, I use she, her, a, a pronouns. I am an assistant director in the Office of Admissions at University of Portland, and I have the great pleasure of working with folks coming from Utah from the Mount Rocky Mountain region. So if that's you today, I am your admissions counselor. Uh, the University of Portland and the Portland metro area rests on traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Calumet, Clackamas, Bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Molala, and many other tribes. And if you would like to learn more about supporting uh, our local Native community, we have some really great resources on our websites for you to do so and to dive into that a bit more. Uh, and I'm excited to share some information with you about University of Portland today. We are a small private Catholic comprehensive teaching university located in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so a little different from all of our California folks here today. Uh, campus itself is located about 15 minutes north of the downtown area of Portland. So we're actually located in, in quite a residential neighborhood. If you were to look at a map of Portland, you would see downtown, you would see the river that goes along downtown and we're located north across the river. Um, so in a residential neighborhood called University Park, still great access to downtown but also great access to a lot of the outdoorsy activities that a lot of our students like to take advantage of. Uh, and while Portland is known for, you know, it's cool downtown and being a really neat city. It's also a lot about its tiny little neighborhoods that attract uh, different people and have different fun things to do. And so we're located really close to St. John's, which is a neighborhood about two miles from campus that has a ton of boutiques and shops and coffee shops, restaurants, movie theater, a gorgeous park. Uh, so some things that are a bit closer for students if like trekking to downtown isn't something that they want to do, uh, but there's St. John's and there's also a lot of other really fun thriving communities uh, near campus as well. Well, we are currently standing at about 400, uh, 4,200 students for our total enrollment with 3,800 being our undergraduate students. So that's the uh, number that you would notice the most if you are coming in to pursue your bachelor's degree at University of Portland. Uh, small class sizes, low student to faculty ratios. One thing that I've really been sharing with a lot of our students who are asking questions about the educational experience is that your classroom experience is going to be really immersive and discussion based. So while professors do prefer sometimes to do lecture-based things, there's always going to be an opportunity for students to get really involved in their learning. Uh, and with us having this commitment to teaching and being a teaching university, you will always be taught by a faculty member from those specific departments starting your first year. So you're never going to be taught by a TA or a graduate student. It's always going to be faculty members. You'll be advised by faculty members and quickly come to know them as your mentors during your time at University of Portland. We are a Catholic institution, so I do want to talk a little bit about what that means and, and what it might mean for the student experience, as this often generates a lot of questions for people interested in UP. Uh, we are a Holy Cross institution, so with that, you'll see some really strong commitments to some um, cornerstone values that we have with teaching and learning, faith and formation, and service and leadership. And the, the idea behind a Holy Cross institution is building community in a place that's going to allow our students to become well-rounded. So what that looks like for us is educating the hands, the hearts, and the mind of all of our students. So providing a really well-balanced education regardless of your major. Um, and ultimately, you know, hopefully allowing room for folks to not only pursue their degree, but also passions that you might find at UP along the way. Uh, sometimes surprising for folks to learn is that uh, most of our students are actually not Catholic. Only about 45% identify as Catholic. I think we might be a little lower than that this year. Um, so you've got some really great faith diversity on campus and while academically you'll see a couple of requirements to take a couple of theology and philosophy classes that only um, that not only fits our um, religious affiliation as an institution, but also the liberal arts piece where we're trying to provide um, a well rounded education to all of our students and ultimately students can be curious and explore in whatever way it feels good for you if you're interested in doing so but very much a message that we share with our students is that um, the religious aspect of the institution will always be an invitation but never an expectation of you in, in any way. Uh, going back to our academics just a little bit, uh, we divide our majors up into five different schools. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Business, the School of Education, the School of Engineering, and the School of Nursing. And for those last four that I mentioned, I do want to touch on that they are direct entry programs. So I'll use nursing as an example. Uh, if you are interested in majoring in nursing at University of Portland, you would indicate that on your application. And when we review your application, we review it specifically for the School of Nursing. So if you get accepted, you 
will start off in the nursing program starting your first year. It's not pre-nursing. You don't have to reapply at a later time. You start there in that first year and you stay there unless you want to change your major and you change your mind. Uh, but that puts you on a solid track regardless of your major to, to get you in and out in four years. Again, I want to highlight that holistic approach for our students and that you're here to major maybe in engineering, but we are still going to be taking a philosophy class or a social science class. So that allows flexibility for students to maybe find another interest and maybe you pick up a double major or a minor along the way, or you use the flexibility of this core curriculum to do something like study abroad um, or participate in a ton of different programs on campus. Uh, a couple of things that I want to highlight with some of our academics are some of almost like the fast track programs that we have. We have a four plus one program in biomedical engineering where you get your undergrad and your master's in five years, three plus one in education where you do your undergrad and your master's in the four years and happy to answer more questions if you're curious about those. Campus life, about 75% of our students come from outside of the state of Oregon. Big producer for us is the state of California. That's where the bulk of our students are coming from. But with this, it cultivates a really fun opportunity for students to get to know each other on campus. First year students are required to live on campus and you can get involved in a variety of things, whether it's a student club or organization or division one sports uh, or through our office of service and leadership and social justice as well to find local opportunities in our neighboring communities. What I want you to take away from today when it comes to applications is that we are a rolling admissions school. Our, open, our process opens September 1st. Uh, recommend you apply by November 15th, final deadline January 15th, and we are test optional for the class of 2022. This is me if you're curious to learn more. Otherwise, I'm really excited that y'all were here today and can't wait to get to work with you. Hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Fresno Pacific University. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And it looks like my PowerPoint started at the very beginning. So let's just go all the way back. Um, give you guys a little sneak peek to everything we got going on today. But my name is Vanessa. I'm our visit event coordinator and also one of our admissions counselors here um, at FPU. Unfortunately, I will not be your guys' admissions counselors, but I will throw his information in the chat so you guys can connect with him if you have more questions about anything that I talk about today. Um, so if you guys are unfamiliar where with Fresno is at, we are actually the fifth largest city in California, right in the Central Valley. So almost the exact center of California. I believe we're about 20 minutes away from the exact center. We have over 300 days of sunshine and we have three national parks in really close proximity, which is what a lot of our students like to do on the weekends during the week, take hikes up to Yosemite, Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Park. Um, we are also only a two hour drive from Monterey Bay, Pismo and the Central Coast in San Francisco. We're about three hours away from Los Angeles um, and Southern California. So really great location. Um, you can get really anywhere in a day. A little bit more about us as a university, we have about um, a little over 4,000 students on our campus across our five campuses um, across the Central Valley. So this includes our graduate programs and our degree completion programs. So on our main campus, which is who you're speaking to today, um, which holds our traditional undergraduate, we have about 1,200 students on that campus. A little bit about our academics. We are a smaller university, um, so we have smaller class sizes, our average being 21 students, an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. We do have over 100 areas of study. I'll talk about more of our popular majors in a second. Um, and our average GPA across campus is a 3.4. Our top five majors on campus this year are psychology, kinesiology, business, communications, and pre-health sciences. Um, we're projecting in these next year's liberal studies and nursing will become a, a, upon the most popular majors as well. Um, speaking of that, some of our distinctive majors on campus are our nursing program. Um, so very similar to a lot of other schools, um, you'll start off as a pre-nursing major and apply after your sophomore year to get into the BSN program. Very similar for what we do for social work too, you'll have to apply after your second year. Liberal Arts and Education, we're very well known for that, as well as throughout the state of California for our teaching credential program. So if you're looking anywhere in education, FPU is a great school to go to, as well as we have software engineering, which is very popular amongst our students and a very growing major on campus. 
One of the coolest things about FPU, we have a four-year graduation guarantee. You probably think, duh, I'll be done with college in four years. But on average, it's taking students anywhere from five to six years to finish with their bachelor's degree. So we guarantee that you're in and out in four years. And if not, we pay for any additional time that you stay um, in tuition and fees and everything like that. So we also have a guarantee for transfer. So if you're looking to transfer in, look at that as well on our website. Um, so as well as we are about academics, we also want students to have fun and engage in our community on campus. Since we are a smaller community, we try to facilitate that a lot on our campus throughout our student body. We do this by student events, intramurals, athletic games, um, worship events, clubs, and off-campus trips. We like to take our students up to San Francisco for the day, down to Disneyland um, as a class of freshmen, sophomore, juniors, or seniors, um, and really try to get students' head out of the books with our 60 clubs and organizations across campus. Um, our 20 intramural sports that we offer. So there's a place for you on campus, um, whether that's in residence life or student life. We are also a Christian university, um, a little bit more about that. We do not require students to come from any sort of faith background, um, just like U of P. Um, it is more of an invitation than an expectation. We do require two um, religious-based courses during your time at FPU. Um, one is um, set out for you. Another, you get to choose something that you're interested in. So you can study things like Hebrew and Greek or the book of Psalms, different things like that. So we try to give you flexibility. We also offer college hours twice a week, not required, um, but a great way to get involved in that. Um, also things like missions and service trips. We take trips throughout winter and um, summer break to about 30 different countries across the globe. Um, we also take students abroad by study abroad. So if you're interested, all of our majors on campus are applicable to study abroad in all of these countries and more. We can definitely take you wherever you're interested in going if you don't see the country that you're interested in on this list. Um, we are also part of the NCAA PAC West Conference. So these are the sports that we have for both men and women. We do not have football or softball or wrestling, which are things students tend to look for. Um, we also have choral and instrumental ensembles you can get involved in our theater programs and our visual arts all of these that i just talked about are applicable for scholarships on campus you don't have to be a major or a minor in our fine arts to receive scholarships but you do have to be an athlete on campus to receive athletic scholarships so if you are an incoming freshman these are some of the things that we look for in your application a 3.1 gpa an application fee of $40, but if you reach out to our admissions office and set up a virtual appointment with a counselor, you can get that waived. We also do offer freshman scholarships um, ranging from $7,000 all the way up to full tuition. For our transfers, we look for 24 transferable units, a 2.4 GPA, um, and have scholarships ranging from $5,000 all the way up to $8,000 per year and are renewable annually. For financial aid, about our students are paying about 25% of tuition. A lot of that is covered by FAFSA, um, FPU grants, on-campus jobs that are very accessible. Um, so breaking it down, there's real realistic payment plans and outside scholarships that we offer as well. We were named the number one most affordable private Christian college on the West Coast, um, and 98% of our students are receiving financial aid. If you've never been to campus before or never been to Fresno and want to come explore and see what we're about, we have a virtual campus tour. You can also make an appointment to come to campus. We are open for visits or you can sit in on virtual classes, meet with admissions counselors virtually, anything like that. Um, getting started, we have a couple deadlines that you should look out for December 1st, March 1st, August 15th. We do not require SAT or ACT scores, but we do require high school and college transcripts and you can apply at experiencefpu.com. Here is my contact information. If you have any initial questions, I will also throw your admissions counselor's contact information in the chat. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you guys so much and good luck in your college search. Thank you so much. Next up, we are going over to Chico State. All right, thank you so much. Uh, one second here. All right, so thanks for logging in. My name is Jacob Wong. I am a admissions counselor for Chico State, and I'm actually a regional recruiter. So I'm based in Southern California and Los Angeles County. Uh, if you've never been to Chico State's campus, we are in Northern California, located in Butte County, where we are a rural campus. 
uh, but in a lot of ways, we're, we're kind of a perfect size. The university itself is about 17,000 students. That makes us a medium-sized CSU campus. And we're located in a historic college town of Chico, California, which is about 100,000 residents. Chico State was founded in 1887, making us over 130 years old. A couple interesting uh, features about the main campus. The first is that we are a highly residential campus. So 90% of our 17,000 students live either on campus in university housing, most of that is clustered over here, or they live off campus within one to two miles of the main campus right here. So again, highly residential campus, whether you're on campus or off, um, you're surrounded by college students kind of 24 seven. Most first year students do choose to live on campus it's not required, so it's up to you if you want to live on or off campus. And then after a year or two, most students choose to move off campus. And again, because of the abundance of affordable housing, that's, that's very convenient. The second uh, kind of interesting feature of our campus is we're located right in downtown Chico. So in this image, anything that's in color is part of the main campus. And the black and white images, those are coffee shops, uh, restaurants, you know, boutiques, uh, little stores where you can buy things. So again, right in downtown Chico everything you can need or want is steps away. Two other interesting uh, features of our campus. We have a 4,000 acre nature preserve called the Big Chico Creek Ecological Reserve, as well as an 800 acre university farm. So certain majors, of course, you're gonna have course requirements that take you out to those areas, but they also hold events throughout the year that are open to all students, regardless of major, as well as community members. We have over 120 different majors, minors, and academic programs. Uh, students are allowed to double major. When you apply to Chico State as a freshman, you're admitted or not based on the same criteria as any other major. So you, the major that you put on your application does not affect uh, your freshman admission. Uh, we do have three majors that are considered impacted, but they're only impacted at the upper division level. Those are nursing, recording arts and music, and social work. And if you have more questions about what upper division impaction means, feel free to ask and, and I'll do my best to address, to address those questions. A few stats here about the academic environment, 23 to one is our student to faculty ratio, average class size of about 30. Since they started this ranking in 1998, Chico State has been in the top 10 for regional public universities in the West, and we're also a top 10% value call. There are over 200 clubs and organizations on campus, ranging from academic clubs like Cellular and Molecular Biology Club to things like Harry Potter and My Little Pony Club and everything in between. Religious clubs, uh, activities and sports clubs, performance. Our largest club is actually one that connects current students with volunteer opportunities in the community of Chico. We are also a Division II sports campus. So similar to Fresno, we don't have a football. Oh wait, I think that was Fresno. It uh, doesn't have a football program. Uh, we do also do not have a football program, but we have 13 other different varsity sports and we compete uh, again at the NCAA Division II level. Club sports, intramurals, as well as our world-class fitness facility called the REC or Wildcat Recreation Center, um, which offers a full catalog of courses that students can, can enjoy, try something new or continue on some kind of activity that you're already experienced in. In terms of admissions for fall 21 and 22, we are not using the SAT or ACTs like many of my uh, higher ed colleagues. Uh, we do evaluate students based on the A through G California standard. And then we start admitting at the top of the GPA range and work our way down until we have the number of students that we can accommodate. So our minimum GPA cutoff is a little bit different each semester, depending on the size and the quality of the applicant pool, as well as how many sp spaces we have available for that given admission cycle. For fall 23 and beyond, the expectation is to go back to SATs and or ACTs. Um, but again, check back before you commit to taking those exams because these things may change. About 30% of our new students every year are transfer students. This is a great pathway if that's a good choice for you. It's usually a two-year process. So as of now, Chico State only accepts upper division transfers, which means you need to have at least 60 units completed before you start at Chico State, 30 of which need to be general education. And then there are four specific GE courses that students need to have completed before they're eligible for admission. The qualifying GPA is similar to the last slide where out of all of our qualified applicants, we start admitting at the top of the GPA range and that minimum cutoff changes semester by semester. A few notes on paying for college. I'm sure you've already heard about FAFSA and the application dates there. 
Uh, if you're not eligible for federal uh, grants and scholarships, you can do the California Dream Act. And then Chico State offers one uh, scholarship application that allows students to be considered for over 700 individual scholarships. It's called the Wildcat Scholarships. The date for that is only once per calendar year, January 2nd through February 15th. You can access the questions you'll be asked to answer as well as the different instructions for the scholarship all year round. So you can go ahead and start on that. And a last note on money, Chico uh, was recently recognized as having the lowest student debt at graduation by LEND EDU uh, out of 22 schools ranked in California, Chico State was at number one and number five out of almost 500 schools ranked nationally. Here's all of our contact information. I will also drop my uh, personal email into the chat so you can contact me directly. But again, thanks for logging in and uh, we'll be sticking around answering questions. Thank you. Thank you so much to our presenters. I want to invite you all to join me back on camera as we move into, we, we have time for uh, one question and one piece of advice that I'm sure our students joining want to hear. Um, and that is what advice would you give someone going through the college search, uh, excuse me, college search process? Um, we're going to start back over with San Diego State University. I'm going to go with something uh, really boring, but really helpful. Um, create a spreadsheet for your college search and keep track of everything. It'll be beneficial to you in the search process, in the selection process, and even when you choose your school to keep track of, you know, housing websites, passwords, logins, all that, all that stuff can be really beneficial to you. University of Redlands. Yeah, so um, some advice for you would be to check out all institutions regardless of their sticker cost. Um, I think a lot of students and parents get really afraid when they look at the sticker cost, and I know even more so with COVID-19 and the pandemic and all the things that have occurred, um, but financial aid is still yet to kick in for a lot of you. So give every university a chance. If you like the institution, they have your major, you like the location, check it out and apply. Financial aid can be a defining factor for once you're admitted, but before that, don't just throw it, you know, throw it off the wayside because um, you're afraid of that, you know, initial shock. But that would be it for, for advice. Dominican University of California. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely both of they said as well. And also, you know, at least for, I know it's a lot of small universities, hope everyone just give us a call or shoot us an email. Uh, I normally, you know, myself and my boss, make sure all of our, all of our workers reply within 24 hours, no matter what. Um, so even during our most crunched, our busiest times, we're gonna respond within a day. Give us a call, I answer most times. So that's a great way to find out about, you know, costs as well, but really just have a conversation with somebody so you're going to learn a lot more that way about the university. Um, you know, once you kind of maybe when you have your, your list narrowed down a little bit, just give us a call. And if you have the ability to come out and see everybody. University of Portland. I'm going to use something that I recently heard one of our students say at a student panel, and that was be selfish and pay attention to what makes you feel happy when you're looking at these schools and what you're looking for in the future. I think there's a lot of pressure around this process and it makes folks really nervous, but ultimately, it's where you're going to call home for the next four years and you want to make sure it feels good to you and what you want to pursue and it's always okay to change your mind too. like folks are here to help you along the way so it's a lot but it's going to be okay and that's why we're all here we're, we're here to help you out so that's what that's what I would share. Fresno Pacific University. Mine is very similar to University of Portland, um, but what I tell a lot of students is just make a list of what is a priority to you. Um, this is going to be your home for the next four years. So we, you want to make sure that it's going to be everything that you want it to be. Um, so make that list. And as you're searching through colleges, make sure that they have those things. If it's small class sizes, if it's a football team, um, if it's a lot of clubs and organizations, um, be selfish in that um, and go after um, what you want. Also, another piece of advice would just be to utilize your resources in the admissions office. I know a lot of us um, do faculty appointments and um, sit in on classes counselor appointments. So don't be afraid to reach out for help from these universities that you're looking into. And last but not least, Chico State. Great. This is similar to the, to the previous two, but as you're looking at all those features that you're interested in, try to keep a, a wide perspective. A lot of people get wrapped up in focusing on one thing. Maybe it's a sports program, maybe it's an academic subject or a, or a club that you're really interested in. And a good mental exercise is imagine being in that place if that one primary focus were gone. Would you still be happy there? Would you still be able to do the things that you want to do? And it's, it can be a difficult exercise, but 
I think all of us have seen those students who go to a university for one reason, and then for whatever reason, that thing doesn't work out, and then they're miserable, and that's hard for everybody. Um, so see if you can take the, as full a picture as possible before you get there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much to you all for joining. Um, when this, uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide in all of these sessions throughout the Rocky Mountain College um, admission counseling uh, series, <laughs> virtual college fair series will be uh, available on demand at strivescan.com backslash from MACAC. Want to really thank our presenters. And for those of you who aren't aware, this is a very busy week for all college admission professionals with the May 1 deadline approaching. So I wish you all the best of luck and thank you for your insight and all of um, all that you do for higher education and have a one, uh, great rest of your day evening. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.